Tonight, we are going to be talking about the Great Commission, the gospel of the kingdom is what not only pastors, ministers, evangelists, those who preach behind a pulpit, it's not only us who are commanded to preach the gospel. Jesus gave that commandment to every single one of his followers. And we're going to start off tonight in Matthew chapter 28, where Jesus gives the great commission to his disciples who had become, the, who would become the apostles. They were going to be the apostles when the Holy Spirit would come upon them. They, Jesus had given them the promise of the Holy Spirit. He told them to go and wait for the Holy Spirit to come down upon them. And they became the apostles. But here in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus says, and in verse 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came, and he spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, this, as I said, is not just something that is commanded of preachers or the apostles, the eleven, and then Paul, who would eventually become an apostle. No, it is something that we are all supposed to do. We see in Matthew 24, in talking about his return, his second coming, and the judgment of this world, Jesus said that before that would happen, that the gospel of the kingdom would be preached unto all nations for a witness, and then the end would come. Well, we are about to that point. The gospel of the kingdom has pretty much reached all nations. And I think I, I saw something a few years back, actually, that said we were, I think it said like 10 years away. And this was years back. So we were like 10 years away from the gospel being preached unto all nations. I think there's like, right now, I don't know if you remember, but there's an island. I want to say it's off in the Pacific of, of Aborigines, these people who, they live away from society. They have no technology. They are primitive people, and they've never receive the gospel and it wasn't too long ago maybe a year ago two at the most there was this uh, Christian missionary who defied the government and went over there and tried to give them the gospel and he was killed they killed him but other than those people and maybe you know a few people in the different countries, the gospel of the kingdom has pretty much reached all over the earth. And it's not up to us to save people. We, we have no ability. We have no power to save. We have authority in Jesus Christ over serpents and scorpions and 
all the powers of the enemy, all the powers of darkness. But we can't save people. We are the body of Christ on earth, but we have no ability to save. We only have the ability to plant seeds. And that is exactly what we are doing when we fulfill the Great Commission from Matthew 28. We see in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus was preaching in parables like he often did. And the great multitudes were gathered together unto him. And so he went into a ship and he sat and the whole multitude stood upon the shore. And it says in verse 4, or it says in verse 3 rather, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground, and they brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and he said unto them, Because it is given unto you. He told the disciples, It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But unto them... It is not given. For, for whosoever hath, to, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. How many of you can relate to that? I know in this quote-unquote woke society that we live in today with uh, the different uh, versions of truth and the uh, different movements of truth and everybody's got the truth except for the only truth that matters, the truth of the Word of God. And we see here in Matthew 13, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they were able to understand through the Holy Spirit. Those, it's the same with us. We are to go out and plant seeds, the seeds of the gospel. We may not see the fruit of that harvest right away. But someone else will come along and they'll water that seed and eventually, eventually, according to God's will, there will be a harvest and it is up to the Holy Spirit and God the Father through Jesus Christ to give salvation. But it is unto us to preach the gospel. And that's not being done. Last week we talked about the judgment of Babylon and the reality of hell, but I do not think that we truly understand just how real a place hell was. And if we do understand how real a place it is, then we obviously just do not care about our brothers and sisters. And by our brothers and sisters, I mean all those in the world who have not received the love of the truth, Jesus Christ. Because if we cared the way that we claim to care, if we truly 
cared about following Jesus Christ, if we truly cared whether or not strangers, loved ones, young, old, those who are lost, if we truly cared whether or not they were going to go to hell, then we would tell them the truth. We can tell them the truth in love. There's a loving way to say, hey brother, hey sister, if you don't repent, you're going to hell. Hell is real. And once there, it's inescapable. Once we take our last breath on this earth, friends, that is it. There, there's no more chances. Now, I want you guys to turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, Paul is preaching to Athens in the book of Acts, chapter 17. Now, In Matthew chapter 28, when Jesus gave the Great Commission, there was only 11 disciples present. And the apostles had not yet become the apostles. The day of Pentecost had not yet happened, and the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon them. But here in Acts chapter 17, that has already happened. The church has formed, the Holy Spirit has fallen upon the apostles. Paul was persecuting Christians and Jesus came upon him on the road to uh, Rome, I believe it was, and he struck him blind. And he said, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why does thou persecute me? And we know the story, we won't get into to it too deeply, but Saul became Paul the Apostle because of that experience. But friends, that is not something that's going to happen to everyone. Jesus does not come down and literally give everyone a Romans road experience. We, as the body of Christ, must fulfill the Great Commission and go out and tell people how they can be born again. We see here in Acts chapter 17, in verse 17, Paul is in the synagogues. He's talking to the Jewish people here. He says, it says, Therefore he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the markets daily with them that met with him. Uh, wait a minute. I, I, I uh, meant to start in verse 15. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given unto idolatry. Then it says in verse 17, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the markets daily with them that met with him. Paul saw the sin going on around him, the idolatry. How much idolatry do we see daily? I don't care where you live, what city you're in, what state you're in, or for that matter, what country you are in, sin is all around us. And if we have the Holy Spirit residing inside of us the way the Apostle Paul did, when we see it, our spirit is going to be stirred inside of us. And we will not be able to help but to speak life unto these dead men and women who are on their way to hell. 
it says in verse 18, Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, What will this babbler say? Other, some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and they brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine wherefore thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. For those of you who don't know, Mars Hill was literally a place dedicated to the Roman god Mars. And he said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you, these Romans in Athens, they were literally, they had an altar set up to God the Father who they declared as the unknown God. And Paul said, it is him that I declare unto you. The God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, and he dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needeth anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, and happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from them. This, friends, is a perfect example of what we will experience in fulfilling the Great Commission. It was just last week, or this, this week that we're in now, a Tuesday, when I went out visiting with the, ended up being with the homeless, I went door to door first, but I didn't have much luck going door to door. So I ended up going and meeting with the homeless and the downtrodden. And I had a lot more 
success there. People wanted to hear what I had to say. Some of them, of course, were, were just listening because they wanted me to give them some money. Others had hit rock bottom and they were grasping for anything to pull them out of the pit that they had found themselves in. And when we go out and do what Paul did here in Acts 17, some will think we're crazy. Some will have nothing to do with what we tell them. They'll mock us the same as they mock Paul. But others will hear again on this matter. They'll want to hear more. We are simply to plant the seeds of the gospel and then it's up to the Holy Spirit. As long as we, brothers and sisters, are obedient in the commandment that Jesus gave us, it really all boils down to the message of the gospel. It's the new commandment Jesus gave us, which is love one another. And if we truly love one another, then we will tell them the truth. We will spread the gospel message with them. The gospel message, of course, being Jesus crucified and resurrected. That is the blessed hope of the gospel. Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. Our blessed hope is that we too will be resurrected just as He was resurrected. This is why we must be born again. When we are born again, we have literally died to our old selves. The old man, the old woman, the old person that we were is dead and gone. It's been crucified with Christ. And we have been born again in spirit. And we are now new creations and citizens of New Jerusalem and the kingdom of God. And it is our job to be ambassadors. All of these scriptures be ambassadors. That means go out and try to grow the kingdom of God by preaching the gospel. We see people, we see so many people day in and day out who are lost and on their way to hell. Some think they're happy in this life. Others are miserable. But without Jesus Christ, they will all have the same result in the end. Once they take their last breath and leave this earth behind, then there's nothing left but judgment. The Word of God says it's appointed unto every man once to die. And then the judgment. We do not have anything ahead of us but death and hell without the blood of Jesus Christ covering our sins. We must have that blood covering our sins. We are coming into a time where the Holy Spirit is going to once again be poured out upon all flesh just as the book of Joel says the same as happened on the day of Pentecost we're going to see the power of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ those of you who are awaiting a secret rapture to get you off the earth so that you don't have to lived through the hour of tribulation. Friends, I hate to tell you this, but the truth is there will be no secret rapture. 
God will not take us out of the world before the tribulation. He will get us through. He will keep us as the book of Revelation says that if we keep the word of His patience, then He will also keep us. That word keep there means to hold, to protect, to watch over. We see a mirror of this in what happened in the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD when the Romans came in and destroyed the temple. We know how, just as Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, not one stone was left standing of the temple. And it is so horrible that I can't describe all of it here, the things that the Jews in Jerusalem went through and the things that they were reduced to doing just to survive. When the Romans had seized the city and they literally starved them out. We like to think of the Holocaust in World War II as the worst period for the Jewish people in history, but it really isn't. What happened in Jerusalem in 70 AD killed many, many more Jews than the Holocaust in World War II. But the Christians, the Christians, they didn't die. There is not one record of a single Christian casualty, although there were many Christians living in Jerusalem. The reason for that is because they knew what Jesus said. Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem encompassed about, around about with armies, flee for the mountains. Don't even go back in your house and get your coat. And they did. They went into a place called Pella, outside of Jerusalem. And there God kept them, provided their needs. And the same will be true for you and I if we are living during the day of tribulation. If we will read the words of the prophecy in Revelation and we will listen to what it says and when we see it happening know what to do we literally have the manual on how to live through the end times but for those of us who are not expecting to be here then we're not paying any attention to the manual and therefore those people will be caught off guard this is why what you believe about the end times is so important. Because if you follow a man-made interpretation of the end times, then you're going to be caught off guard. You're not going to be ready for what the Bible calls a time of trouble unlike the world has ever seen or will ever see again. Friends, we're coming upon that time very, very soon. It's coming closer and closer every day. And this is why it is so important now more than ever to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Not just me and other pastors behind the pulpit, but you. You are commanded to preach the gospel, to make disciples of all nations. You are commanded to tell people about the one who died for them. To tell them how they can escape the judgment that automatically comes from sin. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
The Bible also says in John chapter 3, verse 16. Actually, in verse 14, it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But a lot of times we stop right there. We don't go any further. But that's not where it ends. It says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. Friends, Jesus came preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom. He came as an example to every one of us. He was baptized by John. He preached the gospel of the kingdom, taught the way of life and salvation, the new covenant, the better way. Because if the law of Moses could have saved anyone, then there would have been no need for Jesus. But the law could not save anyone. No amount of sacrificed bulls or lambs or doves could ever cover all the sins. Only the precious shed blood of the Lamb of God could do that. We are to follow Jesus' example and teach and preach Christ crucified. So many times I hear brothers and sisters talk about when Jesus sent out the 12 and then the 70 and how Jesus told them for those who didn't receive the truth that they were preaching to knock the dust off their feet. But friends, that's not what Jesus commanded us to do. That's not what that's not the commandment, the great commission he gave his disciples. He gave his disciples and us the commission and the commandment to make disciples ourselves. Not disciples of us, but disciples of Jesus Christ. A disciple is a student. We get this idea in our head that because Jesus had disciples who one day became the apostles, that a disciple is great. No, a disciple is just a student. And Jesus said that the disciple is not greater than his master or his Lord and the servant is not greater than his master a disciple is not some a disciple and an apostle are two very different things we are not commanded to go out and make apostles and we are not apostles 
but we are commanded to go out and preach the gospel, share the good news of Jesus Christ crucified. If you love one another, if you have the love of Jesus Christ inside of you, that is what you will do. You need to seek the love of Jesus Christ if you don't have it. If you feel hatred in your heart or if you feel anything in your heart for your enemies other than love, then you need to repent. Ask for forgiveness and ask for God.